The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. John. Glory to Christ our Savior. John chapter 1 beginning to read at the 19th verse. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not flee to confess, but confessed freely. I am not Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. That what do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah, the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now, some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. And the, song, the, the tongues of whose sanders I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning because you have proved yourself a God that will never change. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, for you deserve them. We ask this morning, O God, that you speak to us in the language we shall understand. Minister to us, O God, in your power. Let your message come forth as a living word to us. To change and transform every transformable. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today we are, um, we are celebrating. We continue to celebrate the gift of Jesus Christ. So I want to wish all of you. A Merry Christmas and prosperous New Year. The year is fast spent. In few days, few hours, and few minutes, we shall be saying goodbye to the famous 2020. It's so famous that nobody will forget this year. It's unforgettable. Generations and born will talk about 2020. Some for good. Some for bad. But one thing is very certain. That in 2020, all our children were meant to know that the world could be shut down. I'm sure adults listening to me never knew that a day will come that governments of the world will fear for their life. The world that used to be very mighty cracked down in 2020. But we pray that in 2021, the Lord will show us mercy. Therefore, my topic this morning is Jesus, the gift of salvation. You see, during Christmas, we exchange different gifts. We buy different things for our loved ones in expression of our love. We buy these things to show that we love our children. Am I talking to someone? We buy presents to our parents. We send money. 
we send different and all manner of gifts. In Nigeria, where I was born, it's usually a big celebration. Families invite you after they have cooked a wonderful meal and ask you to come and enjoy yourself. In fact, in Nigeria, some people will drink to stupor and drink and drink in celebration of Christmas. And in Nigeria also, I remember that from the part of Nigeria where I come from, a lot of young ladies will also get pregnant between 24 and the, and the 1st of January. It's a normal thing. So in March, we start counting numbers of babies that we are made during this uh, period. It's also a known fact that during this time, it's um, not just a time for our people to celebrate. It's a time to also thank God for what he has done. But they are all missing the purpose for Christmas. The reason for Christmas is so simple. And I'm going to explain what that reason is this morning. That reason is not for no other reason but to celebrate a precious gift that was given to mankind. You see, this period is a period when religious leaders, especially Christian religious leaders, we gather to say, oh, we celebrate the birth of a king. But this morning, I will also try to explain why this season is so important for us. Reason why we must celebrate Christmas with every great joy. People of God this morning, may I remind you that the Christmas celebration is a period of reflection. Hello? Hi. Christmas celebration is a period of reflection. It's a period we should always remember. It's not all about Santa Claus. Christmas, I, I know in this country, our children are meant to believe that Christmas is a time. Santa Claus comes and cro- In fact, I don't know who Santa is. I've tried to dig the story of Santa. Santa never existed. Christmas is not about Santa Claus. Do you hear me, children? Are you hearing me? She became... Christmas is not about Santa Claus. It's not about uh, the red flower. It's not about the lights that we, they use in decorating our streets. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. My daughter said, uh, is Christmas the birthday of Christ? Yes. The church is celebrating the birthday. I think that's a better word for our children. We are celebrating the birthday of Christ. But it's a birthday with a difference. It's a birthday that we celebrate our own victory and our own freedom. Praise the Lord. Because it was at his birth. No, no, no. If Christ had not come, we would not have hope. It was the birth of Christ that brought hope to mankind. Man have lost hope. Man have wandered away. Man have gone astray. But when Jesus came, man came to realize that he has a place in God. Before Christmas, man has lost his place in God. Before Christ came, man was nowhere. Remember in the Garden of Eden. God created Adam and Eve and put a man and a woman. Everything were there for them. God himself made the garden a beautiful place. But man, out of his curiosity, out of his wickedness, out of his jealousy, out of envy, man decided to deviate. How? Man wanted to test everything. Man wants to know everything. There are things, there are things we cannot know. And uh, in the birth of Christ, it reflects. Mary, praise the Lord. Uh, our sister church will call Jesus Christ. And that's correct. That's not wrong too. So what am I saying? A lot of people are still confused. How can a woman conceive without a man? That's the mystery. That's the uncertainty. We ask a lot of questions we don't have an answer to. All you need to agree is that Jesus came to save mankind. If you continue to ask questions, you cannot understand them, for you are human. God is supernatural. God has a lot of wisdom. Where our wisdom begins, that's 
where wisdom ends, that's the beginning of God's wisdom. Praise the Lord this morning. But we read in our first um, lesson this morning, in our epistle, that the Pharisees were so confused. They were confused. And so they came to John the Baptist to find out why John the Baptist was doing baptism. May I also remind you that Jews don't believe in baptism. It's only a section of the Jewish religion that they believe in baptism. What were they doing baptism for? What was baptism meant in the Jewish culture? It was just a time to wash away your sin. If you commit a sin and they take you to a river, they put you in and bring you out, you are already cleansed. That was for a set of the Jews, not for all the Jews. The Jews, as a, as a religion, they have different sets. So there's one set that believes in water baptism. The other said, do not believe in water baptism. So the said that came, the Pharisees that came to, to uh, John, were the said who believed in baptism. But for them, they were confused. Why is this man doing baptism? He is not a priest. Neither is he a Levite. Who is this man that has all these followers? Why is he doing baptism? Who authorized him? Who asked him to do baptism? So they came. But unfortunately, when they came, it was a lot of people. John was already preaching. People were already listening to Brother John. Brother John was already in the wilderness crying, listening. If God is anywhere, people will look for God. Praise the Lord. They will look for him. Unless anywhere people will not go is only where there is no God. John was not in the cathedral. John was not in the big church. John was in the wilderness, ministering. And yet people came looking for John in the wilderness because that was where they found salvation. But where am I going? They said to him, Sir, these are the custodians of uh, 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 religious teachings. So they said, Of who are you? They were investigating him. Oh God, are you Elijah? Why are you doing the works of Elijah? He said, I'm not Elijah. Are you, by any chance, one of the prophets, maybe Moses or, or what? He said, no, I, I am not him. Um, who are you? Who are you? If you are not Moses, you are doing the work of Moses. You are not Elijah. You are doing the work of Elijah. Who are you? Can you tell us who you are? And what, by whose power are you teaching what you are teaching? And John didn't still answer them. He said, I don't know. And they said, they continued, they did not stop there. They said, please, tell us, who are you? Are you Messiah? You know, remember, some set of the Jews are still expecting for the coming of the Messiah. Hello. Hello. So they thought that this man who never ate what people ate. He, he was in the wilderness. He didn't live where people lived. He, he was shouting all the time. People are already following him. They thought he was the Messiah. They said, please tell us, are you that Messiah? He said, no, I'm not even that Messiah. And they became more confused. Brethren, this morning, there are certain times people may come to you. There are three reasons why they came to John. The number one reason was they came to question his authority to teach the gospel. Two, they wanted to find out if John had the credentials of a prophet. They wanted to know if really he was a prophet. And the last reason why they came was they came because they saw a large crowd following John. So they wanted to know the mystery. What is this man doing differently that people are already following him? So these were the main three reasons for looking for John. And uh, they went on and on. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, and Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, you could see them. You could, if you have read those passages, you would discover clearly that they are still waiting for the Messiah. So John had some futures that looked like the Messiah, but he was not the Messiah. Praise the Lord. But the Messiah was born in the town of Bethlehem, and they didn't know he was born. The Messiah had grown in that city. They didn't still know he was there. The Messiah 
was already born. And uh, remember that when this man was born on Christmas Day, Herod sent out soldiers to look for him. Uh, 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 do you remember that story? Yeah. And they killed every child, every male child, in search of the Messiah. But by this time, the Messiah had flee away. Where? Africa. He has gone to Africa. Africa is the mother of life. Praise God. This morning, I'm proud to be an African. Because that was where they saved our Savior. Even during coronavirus, I'm sure the rest of the world may like to go to Africa for safety. Am I talking to someone? Because the whole world is already in disarray. Only Africa. Africa is the only way we have hope is remained. It was like that in the days of Christ. They killed every male child, but they took him to Egypt. And that was the savior of our savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What am I not saying this morning? He got secured because that was the pre-plan of God to save our savior in the land of Egypt. So they didn't know. They thought they had killed him. And yet another Messiah just popped up. You could have asked yourself, where is John the Baptist when they killed the rest? Because he was just six months older. Am I talking to someone? Yes. John the Baptist was just six months older than Jesus. But God also protected him. So when he rose with power, these people were confused. They were asking, who is this man? How come he's doing all this miracle? And John the Baptist went on to tell them that he is of the Savior. People of God, the gift that God gave us is a gift of salvation. In John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, from verse 29, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We should be proud that we are called the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Listen, it is not an easy thing to be called a child of God. It is something to be proud of. That your father is the king of the kings. And that means you are a princess. That means you are a prince. If your father owns the whole universe, who are you? Who are you? Just the prince of worlds and Dutch. They are being celebrated. If they are taking tea in the public, it makes news in the whole world. If they are in an aircraft, it becomes a royal aircraft. If they go to the market, it becomes a royal market. Anything that they wear becomes a, ro it becomes a cloth for celebrities. That is who you are. Anywhere you, you step in, you should make a difference. The light, if you step into a place where there is darkness, you should be able to shine forth. Your light should change darkness because you are the son of the Prince of Peace. That was why it, he was being celebrated in John chapter 2, where it says, I am, you are the child of God. That is who you are. Behold what manner of love the Father has bare stirred upon us. Behold what manner of love the Father has bare stirred upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. It's a thing of pride to be called a child of God. Unfortunately, people hide it. You see, I once had a story of a Christian who works in an office. He was after his secretary. And one day the secretary said to him, Sir, I think you are a leader in the church. Uh, sir, why are you doing this? Why do you want to abuse me even in our office? He said to the young lady, don't mind what we do in that place. Don't mind what we do in that place. He doesn't even believe that the church is the house of God. So because he wants two minutes sin. He can say anything at the point of looking for what he's looking for. A lot of us are like that. We should be proud to defend our faith, even at the point of death. Jesus is the Savior, and we cannot afford no more, no less. We are his children and must behave like one. We must shine like light. Listen, there are also some reasons why the Jews who came did not behave very well. One, they were jealous of 
There are lessons to learn from this uh, 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 sermon, from the gospel. One, the Jews were jealous of uh, John the Baptist. Are you jealous? Are you a jealous person? Has your jealousy pushed you so far that you are now a wicked person? Has your jealousy pushed you so far that you are now beginning to think of removing somebody's life? Are you so jealous about somebody that you're already plotting you for someone? Have you become so cheap in the hands of the devil to become a tool for destruction because of jealousy? They came looking for John to fall into their traps because they were jealous that people were following John. Two, we discovered that John was a very humble man. The humility of John was so great. How? He said to them, I am not Christ. John did not claim the position that he did not have. Am I talking to someone? They said, are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you the prophet? He said, no. Are you a great? You are great. Remember, we must be careful when men sing our praise. You must be so careful so that you don't mess up because praises of men could lead to destruction. The only praise we must look for and wait for is the praise of God. Once God praises you, no man can castigate you. Once you live in the presence of God, men may try to pull you down. Let me tell you, when they pushed Daniel in the den of lions, that place became a beer parlor for Daniel. It became so cold. Lions became his friends. They came around. He played with them. And they pushed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the tongue of fire. And they saw four people instead of three. So when they push you around, they will only make you stronger. Am I talking to someone? When situations of life come around to push you, just be firm because you are a child of God. You shall come out victorious. There are times you think you have lost it all. There are, I had a friend. He was in the ministry. Um, I met him in the seminary. He was in the ministry. And he was telling me a story one day. He said that when he went to do business somewhere in Jos, they said to him that he can never become anything in life. His master said to him that he is useless. His master said to him that he would never learn anything. But unknown to him that he was in the wrong place. Sometimes people will push you out, not knowing they are pushing you to your destiny. Am I talking to someone? And uh, he, the man sent him home, not settling him, not allowing him to finish the years of apprenticeship. So he went home. That year was the year they were announcing many that they needed some fresh recruits. So because he had gone home believing that he is now a useless man, he now decided to go to army so that maybe bandits will waste him instead of wasting in the village. He went to, the, to uh, whatever military school. He's a major now. The person I'm talking to is a major in Nigerian army. He went to their school five years after he was promoted above his mates. And now he said to me, you know that my boss will always call me and say, I knew you were going to be a great man. Hello. Those who castigated you in the past will call you and say, we knew you would be a great man. While you were going, they said you would be useless. While you were coming, they said you would not be anything. They said you would amount to nothing. But remember, few days from now, few years from now, few weeks from now, few months from now, they shall see you and your phone number, they shall look for your phone number. Men who say you will not become anything will say, please, can I have contact with this person? Amen. 2021 will be a year with a difference. Amen. It's my prayers. Amen. Listen, all you need is that gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus to mankind changed the course of life. Am I talking to someone? So we discovered humility. John became a very humble man. Please, this is a very important aspect that we are all failing. We have refused to be humble as human. I'm asking us that the only way to the cross is through humility. We cannot get to the cross with our pride. Genting, I watched a, a, a movie 
One that was going to God. He had so many bags. So, and it was a long trek. And few were going to God. They had no bag at all. The one who had many bags. You know the bags he carried? He carried the bags of his wealth. I'm a big man. I'm a rich man. Do you know who I am? He carried the bags of pride. He carried the bags of wickedness. He carried so much bags that he weighed him down. He could not move at the pace of others. Am I talking to someone this morning? We must lose our bags so that we can travel along with Jesus Christ. Are we guilty? The gift of Jesus Christ will remove guilt from us. Where we read in John was simply assuring us that, see, with God, no matter what you have done in the past, they do not count. Is anyone condemning you about your past life? Tell him that you had a gift that changed the course of life. Is anybody reminding you of your past? The Bible says, for all things have passed away. Behold, everything has been made new. Nobody can define you. Your definition this morning is in John, 1 John chapter 2. That's who you are. Hello? If they have defined you before as never do well, this morning I'm giving you a new definition. And that new definition is you are the son of God. Have you lived in a, do you have a secret life that you remember and it haunts you this morning? Is the devil accusing you? In Romans chapter 12 verse 10, can you bring it if you have seen it? You will discover that the devil was the accuser of the brethren. All the devil does is to accuse you, to make you look like a sinner. Listen, I pronounce to you this morning, you are not a sinner. Therefore, God has paid your price. God has paid your price. It was on your mehe. Listen, it's a very big difference. People don't know the difference between a sinner and somebody who fell in sin. And I'm going to explain it again. A sinner is a man who commits a sin and never feels remorse about his sin. He's a sinner. Do I, do I repeat myself again? A sinner is a man, a woman, who is proud in his or her sin. She is willing to commit it today, tomorrow. She's committing one now. She's planning about another one tomorrow. She has no remorse. He has no remorse. They have no remorse of what they have done. Whenever they fall into a sin, they don't even know the difference between sin and not sin. The sinner is a person whose lifestyle is already a sin. Come on, am I talking to someone? A sinner is somebody whose lifestyle is already a sin. But if you are a child of God and you fall into a sin and you turn around and say, Oh God, I'm sorry. The gift of Jesus is for you this morning. And that gift is assuring you that you are a child of God. Listen, let no man, let no preacher put you in the place where you do not belong. Am I talking to you? Yes, there are times people make you feel guilty. And you know you have confessed this sin 20 years ago. You have repented of this sin 15 years ago. And they are still making you feel guilty. I want to announce to you, for whoever the Son of Man sets free, is free indeed. You can never remain in the past. Tell them that they cannot remind you of your past. That you are just working on your psychological state of life. Listen, I want to change your thinking. If you know Jesus, you are saved. If you have accepted Jesus, of course, how many times do you become born again? There are people that are born again every week. Are you not tired of being born again? You, they born you every week. You remain a baby. Oh. Praise the Lord. Come on, let me, can I explain better? 
maybe I'm, I'm not sounding great. But listen, you were born today. And tomorrow, you are born again. Next tomorrow, you are born. Remember, each time they born you, you become a baby. Am I talking to someone? Yes. Come on. How do I explain this? People that are new birth are babies. Am I talking? Mm -hmm. Now, each time that you come out that you are born again, or simply what you are doing is you are becoming a baby in the faith. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow again, you become born again. Instead of being 12 years old, you return to one year old. We start nurturing you again. Next week, you come again and say, I am born again. You return back to square one. So you will keep drinking milk. You never eat that book. Hello. It is time for us to move on. To realize that the gift of this Jesus Christ has come to change the course of man. The gift of Jesus Christ has come to wash us away from our sin. It has come to redeem us. That is the message this morning. Do you have a secret life that no one knows about? You can go to your father in secret. He sees you. He knows you. He is willing to accept you. He says, behold, what manner of love the father has done what? Best upon us. That we should be called what? The sons of God. That is my message this morning. I want to also encourage you. If God was a wicked man, David will not be mentioned as a man after his own heart. Do you believe me? If God was that wicked, he will not allow David's name be mentioned as Jesus' grandfather. How many of you know that Jesus was, David was Jesus' great-grandfather? Now, nah. let me explain. Now, here comes a man with God's a man God loved so much. And the Israelites went to war. And Uriah was living beside his house. And Uriah was a warrior in his own army. And when, king, when nations go to war in the olden days, the kings are supposed to go to war with them. Am I talking to someone? Yeah. And now instead of King David going to war, King David in 2 Samuel chapter 10, from uh, 9, 10, 11 chapters. Instead of the king to go to war, he was at home doing what? Because he knew that his neighbor had gone to war. I'm sure he has been eyeing Beersheba. Because he knew that Beersheba was at home. The Bible, he knew very well. And I have no doubt that the king knows the time that woman goes to take her bath. Because she was living beside the king's house. Now, the king did not just commit one sin. He committed two sins at a time. I will tell you. He sent for Beersheba. It could be rape, but the Bible did not call it rape. But if you look at the actions, calling a woman whose husband is in battlefield, coming into her house, and the Bible says he lay with the woman. With the, the Bible did not go in details. It could be that he forced the woman. And whatever they did, the woman got pregnant. Now, to cover up his sin, you know, there's a problem that we need to watch. A, there are times we, the sin, to cover up sin is more expensive to commit sin. Do you know that? Yeah. It's more expensive to cover up sin than to commit the sin. So the king wanted to cover up his atrocity. What did the king do? He sent for Uriah. Uriah was not even a Jew. He was a Hittite. Kai, a man who came to live among them and to fight for them. It's, let me explain. He, he, it was like Nigerians coming to America and becoming American citizens. And going to America, so, becoming an American soldier to fight to defend the American land. Don't you know that that person should be held in high esteem? And a lot of times, countries that accept people... In, in the military, they send out uh, foreigners first in the battlefield to go die. So Uriah was one of them. And Uriah was already doing his battle, fighting for the land where he came to belong to. Brethren, the king sent for this noble man, a gentleman who had nothing against the king, who loved the nation where he came to live. And he came home, they said, go home 
Wash thy feet in thy house. What that means means go home and sleep with your wife. The man got home and said, I cannot sleep this night. My men are in battlefield. How can I be having pleasure when my men are dying? How can I be having pleasure with my wife? Why can I have sex when others are already in the battlefield dying? I cannot do that. He returned. And David called the, girl, the woman. If it were today when there was phone, he could test her or chat. Married women that are always chatting. And when your husband talks, he said, does it mean anything? And the people you are chatting with, your husband don't even know them. You chat and delete. Every time you are chatting, every time you are on social media, you don't even want your husband to know who you are chatting with. Is it any time you want to know everything? He must know everything. Hello? Uh, if you are listening to me and uh, small, small boys are chatting you up, you don't even know them. I was talking to one of my friends in Nigeria. She said to me, Ukochuku, you know what is really annoying? That one small boy that could be 12 years was chatting a lady of 40-something years. And the lady said, do you know my age? And she said, age is just a number. This is the world where we are going to. Where babies want to sleep with their grandmother. Are you not ashamed? We are living in a world where children, yet generations that are yet to born, they don't even fear anybody because of social media. You could see your mother, you are saying, hello, baby, because you have phone. And the phone you are even chatting with, well, somebody gave it to you, you can't afford one. <laughs> hello. Hi. It's a generation where we are. We're in a generation where our children have lost their value. They see a, a, a young girl that could be in secondary school saw me on Facebook and she embossed me. Uh, my name is Adama. I am from this place. I am this person. Uh, I see you are in America. Uh, I, can, I can have sex if you want. This is the generation where we have gone to. We are children that are in secondary school can chat up their grandfather. They want to sleep with their grandfather. They tell their grandfather we can have sex. It's where we have reached. That is where the world is going. Do you know what your children watch when they watch their movie? They have movies in their palms. And the church is sleeping. The church is busy playing politics. We don't even have time to organize programs for our children. We don't even want to tell them the truth. Listen, what you don't want your children to hear, people are already telling them. So we must have to tell them the truth. We must have to tell them that the gift of Jesus is to save them. The gift of Jesus is to change the course of mankind. People are already talking to them. We don't know. Hello? And I got another story to share before I finish up with David. A young person again, a friend, a priest called me. We are chatting on phone. We are talking. And he said to me, Why maybe early? I said to him, Otago uh, maybe. The world is already fast destroyed. He said to me that um, he just read a letter. And that letter he read was for one big man of God. One very big man of God. Who had um, the courage of going to sleep with the maid. A very big man of God. And uh, the maid had a baby for him. And uh, the accent, he said, uh, my wife don't have a baby. That's why I went to make another baby, which we are made. And today, when we are talking about David, people will cast their stones on David. We are living in a world that is fast crashing. We need the gift of Jesus to save mankind. Am I talking to someone this morning? So how did it end? And Uriah came. David said, since he doesn't want to have sex, since he doesn't want to enjoy, I know how to deal with him. Take him to the battlefield. Put him in front. Put him where the bullets land. Don't give him any armor. He's going to go to battlefield without protection. Put him there. Let them kill him. And Uriah was put in battlefield without protection. And he was killed. And that woman was smiling. Because David came to marry her. Women 
I'm not a, a fighting women this morning, but I'm saying the facts of life. This did not happen now. Happen. When their husbands die, that is when they start buying big rapper. That is when they start enjoying life. They start it at fresh. That is when the so, one, one news broke out last year on social media. A lady was having an affair with her pastor. And how many of you read that story? She was having a business, sexual business with the pastor. And the husband discovered that um, this was happening, but didn't know. So asked the wife, tell me the truth. Are you doing this with the pastor? People are, rumor is going everywhere. And the wife said, no, it's not happening. And the wife went and told the pastor. This pastor is in police state somewhere in Nigeria, somewhere around the Baden. And they told the pastor. And you know what the pastor did? The pastor said, lure that man out. I will pick him up like I want to drop him off. And along the way, I will kill him. I will position people who will kill him. And when we kill him, we'll put him in the car and burn the car. And it will look like the car caught fire. And they did this crime five years ago. Nobody knew. How did the family now come to understand? After five years, the pastor came to marry the same woman. He was the pastor. And the pastor divorced his own wife and came for the man's uh, wife. And now relatives of the family came around and said, no, we must investigate this. And they went investigating, investigating. They got the woman. You trust Nigerian police. It's not American police. I trust Niger. Even if you're not committing, they're going to make you commit them. <laughs> Hello? Even if you are not guilty, Nigerian police will make you admit your own sin. The, when they beat you in the police station, you know that. Uh, you think it's America, where, where they ask you questions. Nigerian police know they ask questions, then they beat person. Am I talking to someone? So by the time they beat the pastor blue and black, he confessed to the sin and took them where, how it happened. It was low and behold, the woman killed the husband because of her. That is where we are going. This is where the world is landing. So David planned and killed Uriah. We are talking about the old, but it's also happening now. That is why I'm also bringing our current day and the past. And uh, the woman came and became David's wife. Do you know that that woman was Solomon's mother? Whoa. Praise God. Amen. How many of you know that Bathsheba was Solomon's mother? Now, I, now, that brings me to my message. That God is a God of mercy. He finally forgave that woman. No matter that kind of sin, God had mercy. And let Solomon became the one who, even though Solomon was a man of wisdom, remember he also had the mother's blood too, <laughs> 700 or something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So 700 wives uh, uh, and uh, 300 wives and uh, 700 concubines. And everything was 1,000 anyway. Whichever one, whichever way you place it, it was 1,000 women, only him. So you remember the source where it was coming from. That was how he came in. But how, what am I saying? David died a man after God's own heart. Solomon became the wisest king. Beersheba was counted among the grandmothers of Jesus Christ. So this morning, no matter what you have done in the past, accept him. Accept this gift. He shall wipe away your sin. Let us pray. I am serving the God of miracle. I know. Yes, I know. I am serving the God of miracle. I know. Yes, I know. Pray to God and ask him forgiveness once and for all. Tell him that you are ready for him for life. You are for Jesus for life. No man can make you feel guilty. No woman can make you feel guilty. Accept the gift of Jesus. And that is all you need. May the Lord bless his word this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.